The city of Masiru in Lesotho welcomed some 400 riders and their support crews to the 2022 Roof of Africa. Across four classes, the elite gold, silver, bronze and iron, riders of all ages have travelled from far and wide to test themselves and their bikes in the mother of hard enduros. First held in 1967, the Roof under the Lesotho Off-Road Association is an iconic African sporting event. From seasoned campaigners to nervous novices, they were ready to roll. A band of committed sportsmen and women taking on one of the toughest events in their sport. They wouldn't want to be anywhere else. The vibe was electric and the first day saw the riders back on the streets of the capital city for the popular Round the Houses. Thousands of locals lined the course to feel the vibe, hear the roar of the high-powered enduro bikes and smell the fumes. They were part of the action. The newly appointed Prime Minister of Lesotho, Sam Metakani, a self-confessed petrol head and a former car racer himself, was on hand to send the riders away on the short, fast blast around the streets. This was a chance to settle the pre-race nerves and get a feel of the bike ahead of the far more challenging days that lay ahead in the Maluti Mountains. Defending champion Wade Young was back on his Sherco factory racing powered by Motel Machine. A couple of broken ribs wasn't going to stop him from chasing a seventh win. Manny Lindenbechler, the current FIM hard enduro world champion from Germany, was back for his second shot at the roof, and double podium finisher Travis Teasdale was hungry to stand on the top step. Wade Young once again showed his roof credentials by holding off longtime rival and 2022 South African enduro champion Brett Swanepoel of the Husqvarna racing team to take the win. Much as Round the Houses is an iconic component of the roof, the mother of hard enduro is of course all about the Maluti Mountains and Bushman's Pass, which is where the competitors headed after the charge around Masiru. This year's roof was to have been the first time that the gold and silver class riders took on the new Ndoa Ntaba or mountain battle, but the elements clearly had other ideas. Rain, hail and thunderstorms forced a change of format with the organizers using the top 20 gold class practice times and instead sending riders out for a single hot lap, the outcome of which was used to determine the results for the day. It was a torrent battle for all the riders. The top riders used the shoulder of the mountain where the mud was not quite as thick to get past slower competitors, William Slater showing how it's done. It was brutally tough and demanded every ounce of concentration and strength. Rider after rider was left spinning out. Heavy mud inhibited traction. Clear line choice was a critical factor. Get it right and you're away like Matt Green on the left. Get it wrong and you were done. Wade Young was in his element as the course wound up and down the mountainside. Red Swanepoel on his Husqvarna making short work of the stream crossing. Sonra Biliam Dodana in the silver class is all focus and fierce determination. Green showing just why he's the reigning FIM Junior Hard Enduro World Champion. True class. The F61 fast KTM team rider was making it look a lot easier than most of the other competitors. It's nigh on impossible to prepare for these conditions, and riding on instinct is often the best tactic. After the COVID pandemic, this year saw a solid international entry, and the newbies among them, like Austrian Michael Walkner of Gas Gas Factory Racing, were getting an early taste of the Maluti Man. The normally peaceful green hillsides were awash with the roar of enduro bikes. Homes were empty. The locals had flocked to the Bushman's Pass to be part of the action. And to help out, Harry Drenth, the grateful rider here. Concern etched on the face. The skies were darkening. The rain was returning. Damien Berry's bike was overheating. The conditions brought out the true roof spirit of camaraderie and community. 
Both local and travelling spectators did what they could to help the riders get through the toughest sections. This is the spirit that sets the roof apart from other events. Physical and emotional boundaries were pushed to the very limit. It's only two and a half, three times to go. Making a path down the treacherously slippery rocks was a dangerous job. Especially when, like Karl Robeck here, you're exhausted. Dude, that is, uh, it's insane. I think I can do it. It's full of what I can do. It. Like, that is, I can not know if my life is so moeilijk. It's unbelievable. The community were incredible as they did all they could to help these shattered riders get to the top of the mountain. Tow ropes, pulling, pushing. A rideable section was a thrill, but first you had to get there. Living up to her reputation of providing a true test for those who take on the roof, Mother Nature delivered a hailstorm that just made conditions even more extreme and forced the race organizers to cut short the racing. The roof can be a race of fine margins and the gold class Walkner of Gas Gas Factory Racing took the win by just two seconds from Littenbichler of Red Bull Factory Racing KTM. Last year's runners up and the highest placed Southern African riders so far, Travis Teasdale rounded out the podium. In the silver class, practice times from qualifying were used to determine the positions. Daniel Schroeder took first place followed by Austin Stewart and Luke Walker. In the bronze, Brian Burrows built up a five minute leader but Kate Stroh with Stian Portgitter in third. And in the iron class, KTM swept the boards, off-road veteran Tom Klaassen, followed by Jack Brotherton and Peter Kritzinger. After a day like this, the riders and bikes needed all the TLC they could get. The legend nine-time roof winner Alfie Cox keeping an eye on the KTM team. While riders rested up at the Avani Lesotho Hotel, the pit crews and mechanics worked long into the night in the car park. Day two of the mother of all Enduros and those who'd camped out at Bushman's Pass had endured a torrid night. High winds and heavy rains flattened tents and gazebos. Mother Nature was destined to be a big player in the 2022 Roof of Africa. It was going to be another truly testing day for the entire roof community. Grim riders' faces told a story. Travis Teasdale, could he make a move today? 20-year-old Maddie Green, fresh from winning the Sea to Sky in Turkey. World champion Manny Lettenbichler, who cut his roof teeth as a 19-year-old with his dad five years ago. The conditions had forced the organizers to make changes to the route due to swollen rivers, which resulted in anything between 50 and 90 kilometers being taken out of the route, depending on which class it was in. From his position high in the sky, race director Sharon Moore was stressing he had to make some tough calls. On the ground, the gold riders had reached a heavily swollen river crossing. Why? Oh, yeah, it's quite <laughs> because you cannot cross this river. It's so deep. And we, I don't know what we are doing now, but let's see. The plan was to try and find a better crossing point further downstream. Guided by Moore and the chopper, they found a wider section of river. This appeared to be flowing a little slower. Once in the water, it was a different matter, as riders tried to hold onto their machines while battling the current and the uneven surface underfoot. They also needed to avoid drowning their bikes, a fate that befell Lettenbichler. The true spirit of the roof was again evident as riders put aside their own racing ambitions to help others get across the raging torrent safely. 
This was dangerous stuff. A massive volume of water was surging down the valley and washing everything that wasn't strong enough to hold its ground down with it. An amazing sight to see these highly competitive sportsmen help each other to get to safety. Lettenbichler was grateful for the help from Matty Green in getting his KTM running again. Two world champions helping one another. And Green thanking the local youngsters for their assistance. And then they were away, racing through and into the vast Maluti Mountains. Travis Teasdale picking lines perfectly. Wade Young on his Shurko, putting aside the pain of those broken ribs, was as focused as ever. Behind him, Lettenbichler, not as familiar with the terrain here, was trying to follow his lines. It was incredibly close racing. Brett Swanepoel's Husqvarna kisses a hardy bush. This was the roof at its absolute toughest. And these riders were up for the challenge. Dylan Jones from Durban wrestling his KTM through the rocks. After reaching the top, there was a sweet reward. A long, fast descent off the mountain to drop down into the valley. It's on these fertile floodplains that the rural Basuta farmers plant their crops. A local canters by on a hardy, well-conditioned Basuta pony. So at home in the hills. In stark contrast to the struggles endured by riders out on their high-powered enduro bikes. The steel bridge, surely the easiest way to cross a swollen river. Bloemfontein's Austin Stewart, back from Broken Finger, was picking his way down the valley. The magic of the roof is that it has something for every rider. From the world's best in the gold class to novices in iron and bronze. Martin Camp had brought his three sons, Nick, Matt and Tim along to tackle the iron class. What a family vibe. Graham McLaughlin was back for his 31st roof. And the man who started up global brand USN, the nutrition sponsors of this year's roof, Albi Geldenais, was getting his first taste of the event. Falling is part of the deal on the roof, hopefully with not too much damage to body and bike. The mystique of the roof, the intimidating river crossings deep in remote valleys. And the exhilarating feeling of finding the perfect line and riding up to the top of the mountain. A long way from the mechanics, riders have to carry tools and a calm head to effect repairs out on the trail. The low level bridge, another welcome river crossing option. Sometimes the gradient is just too much. Brad Herridge looked sure of his line, but the greasy rocks had other ideas. This was a roller coaster ride on two wheels. Good balance and skills. The refuel point on day two. Fuel at these stops was part of the entry fee, and Motul, the race's official lubricant partner, provided Motul 710 two stroke oil for pre mixed fuel. Fuel for the body was provided by USN. The racing was so close. Manny Littenbechler with his revived bike after the drowning was alongside Wade Young as they carefully refueled their machines. It was boiling up to a thrilling finish in the gold class on day two. Gold is the class most roof riders aspire to race. The distances are longer, the terrain tougher and the competition is next level. It's where the best of the world fly high and occasionally fall hard. Nineteen-year-old Tate Stroh on a Yamaha had a chasing experience in gold a year ago, but was dominating the bronze race now. Five months of tree planting in harsh and remote northern Canada earlier this year toughened the Winston youngster up, and he was flying. 
problem for Dane's Austin Stewart was going very well in the silver. He had a commanding lead out on the trail. In the charge to the revised finish line, Wade Young had got away from Teasdale and Lettenbichler to take the win. Behind Young, the world champion from Germany and the ASP Rope McLaren's racing rider were fighting for second. It was thrilling peg-to-peg -peg racing. Travis Teasdale just managed to squeeze in front to take second place by a second. Just over two minutes separated the top three in gold after two intense days of racing. In silver, Austin Stewart had 23 minutes in hand over the KTM of Daniel Schroeder. Tate Stroh's Yamaha had a 16-minute advantage on his friend Stian Portheter in bronze. The third and final day of the Mother of Hard Enduros, and again the weather was going to be a major factor. A misty morning in the Maluti Mountains, and after more heavy overnight rain, the organisers had to make changes to the planned route. There was no doubt it was going to live up to its billing as the Mother of Hard Enduros once again. As a six-time winner, Wade Young knows the terrain like no one else. He had pressure though. Manny Littenbichler and Travis Teasdale were breathing down his neck. Michael Walkner of the Gas Gas team was in for another tough day. Like the other internationals, the Austrian had navigation as perhaps their toughest challenge. On the positive side, the sun emerged just before the start. A date with destiny awaits. Some sit quietly. Travis Teasdale chats with William Slater. Wade Young contemplates the day ahead. Jack Brotherton will chase Iron Race leader Tom Clarson. They were riding the full day two route. Engine started. It was time to race while gold waited. Zach Niemann and Austin Stewart set off in the silver class. At Spray, dabbing down to keep it steady. Matty Green was a man on a mission as they plummeted down the rugged track to the base of the valley. Manny Lidenbichler won five rounds of the Hard Enduro World Championships this year on his way to the title. And the good news is that the roof will be part of the Global Series in 2023. In September next year, the roof of Africa will be round six of the Hard Enduro World Championship Series. And this is what the riders can look forward to. Stefan Tolme riding third in the bronze, coming unstuck on the boulders. SA E1 Enduro champion Dylan Jones showing his skill on the ravine climb. The race leader, Wade Young on his Sherco, was 10th at the World Championship Series with the best of fourth in Tennessee. He had gone out hard to put pressure on his rivals. Tom Clarson made his roof debut in 1992. Here he is leading the iron class. What an inspiration. Thanks. You guys are tough, eh? Whoa. They don't come much tougher than Tom. At the other end of the experience spectrum, bronze leader Tate Stroh. Young Luke Walker on a KTM was now leading silver after Austin Stewart had had a mechanical. And in gold, Wade Young was doing what he does best, leading from the front. Race director Sharon Moore had promised the riders a short but very hard uphill stage. And that's what they got. They also got more slush, courtesy of another heavy downpour. Greasy rocks and peanut butter mud. It was tense for the parents, a young mum looking out for her son, no doubt. It was all hands on deck again as riders were pulled up the unrideable sections. 
16-year-old talent Thomas Scales of Ride KTM Durban was in second place in silver. Enduro stalwart Jack Brotherton from Mpumalanga keeping it tidy through the dry riverbed as he held on to third in the iron class. Back in the bronze, it was a mud fest. Jason Brown was stuck. And so were these two as they tried to cross a torrent. Concentration and focus was key. Travis Teasdale was doing all he could to close the gap to Young. All this amidst the majesty and beauty of the misty Maluti Mountains. Where the local residents are unfailingly friendly. The roof of Africa is the ultimate test of man and machine. And their ability to combine to conquer the roughest terrain in southern Africa. A rider needs to be at their peak mentally and physically, while also ensuring the bike is able to handle everything and more those twin maternal tormentors Mother's Earth and Nature throw at them. MG47 on his helmet, junior world champion Matty Green was in a little hole. William Slater behind was setting up to pass him. Austrian Michael Walkner, sixth in the Hard Enduro World Championships this year. Brett Swanepoel, the S Enduro champion in his Husqvarna, and Tristan Tamsin flying the Yamaha blue colours across the rocks. Also on a Yamaha man, perhaps destined for the top, Tate Stroh absolutely smashing the bronze class with a 20 minute lead. There was no stopping Wade Young though, a fierce competitor. He was going all in for another victory. If adventure and a seriously tough challenge is what you were after, then the 2022 Roof of Africa was the place to be. Another moment of roof bonding, Kalen Erskine with a flat battery is given a jump start by a fellow competitor, just so he can ride on to the finish. That is the essence of the Roof of Africa. The 2022 roof will long be talked about as one of the toughest ever thanks to the extreme weather. But it will also be remembered by many riders as the event they met and made so many good friends. Tough times make for good times and good friends. A massive shout out to Sharon Moore and the team from Live Lesotho for making it happen in the most trying of circumstances. The finish was waiting, and Wade Young on his Sherco duly put the finishing touches to a remarkable seventh victory, just over two minutes ahead of Manny Littenbichler. Wade is now just two wins away from matching the record of the great Alfie Cox. And Alfie was there to celebrate his young rider Luke Walker had blasted home to take the win in the silver category. Tate Stroh dominated the bronze on his Yamaha, and 30 years after his first roof, Tom Clarsen took the honours in the iron class. An epic and emotional weekend in the Maluti Mountains. Congratulations to every finisher of the Roof of Africa, the mother of hard enduros. You have earned a medal to treasure.